back to episode 31 of the Tundra Cast, and today I'm joined by Shay. What's up? Nick. Hello there. And Dank. Hi. And today we'll be covering round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs, and we will start with the Boston New York series. Poor Tuca. Yeah, poor Tuca. I mean. Um, oh, you want to go? Okay. I, I was just going to say, when it comes to poor Tuca, I mean, like. I mean, he just ran into New York at the wrong time. But New York <laughs> is a team that. They showed it in uh, the series with Pittsburgh that New York is going to be a team that's going to be around a lot more than we thought they would. I mean, I mean, I've always kind of said this about Tuca. He always seems to be kind of more of a streaky goaltender. Yeah. Like he can be really, really good and then be really, really bad. But when he's really bad, it's in he's really bad. important moments, like yeah. in the second round we just saw. So it's unfortunate. I think it's – you know, I don't, I don't think – I think Bruins fans are being so harsh on him. Like it's not – I think so too. His, it's not all his fault I – you know, that you guys lost the series. I mean, if you look at his stats his, historically, he's been a very consistent netminder. And I get it. He did not show up in the last two games of the playoffs. But, yeah, I mean, you, you just you just look at how much Chuka has done for that franchise, especially in the early 2010s. You no, know, you can't just put the blame on him. There has to yeah, be more players to blame. Yeah, yeah Tuka is definitely a legend. A phenomenal goalie. It's, I think his streakiness usually comes when he's like battling his consistent injuries that he like has to handle. This time he has to handle his back getting injured. Yeah. And it's, or either that or it's just like his whole team just gives up on him because there's zero depth like this series showed. You know, Tukares didn't even finish with that bad of a stat line. I mean, he had a 919 save percentage. But when you compare that to, you know, who he was up against, Sorokin with a 934 save percentage. Well, I mean, you also got to take in factor of Barry Trotz's system. Yeah, Barry Trotz's system definitely helps a lot. I mean, just look at it with, you know, him with Nashville, him with Washington, and now him with the Islanders. He's definitely a, a he's definitely one of the best coaches in the NH, in NHL's history. But, but yeah, I mean. You just ran. They just ran into a a New York team that really that really has something to prove this year. Um, and one interesting stat line I found is is this like stat line called PDO, which is like some advanced analytic thing that measure luckiness. Yeah, if you're over one hundred two percent. Like it means you're lucky. Right. To win it, I wonder is like on even in one of in two of the Pittsburgh games. And one, one, two, three, four games against the Bruins. They had like a over one hundred percent PDO, which means it's it's something to like look up on and think, oh yes, they're lucky. But like, like, is this even like? Is it also like something to say like, is it even like a good thing? It's just like, are they truly are lucky to be here? Yeah. And I mean, the thing with Isles is that I feel like they, they are a good team. You know, every year I really slept on them. In 2019, I actually had the Penguins being them in six. In 2020, I had the Capitals being them in five. But this year, I was like, you know what? I can't underestimate them. And right now, they're showing that, you know, they're, they are a good team. And they're doing this all about their captain, Andres Lee. So, you know, I, I get it for Bruins fans that, you know, this might be kind of the final, you know, upcoming years where that core yeah. can actually win, win a cup. Because, I mean, Berger, Berger, no, Bergeron's aging, Marchand's aging. Craig is um, UFA. Yeah, Craig is UFA. He might retire. He might go back to Czech Republic. You know, it's, this was kind of like the final goal in the year. And, you know, I think the one reason why Boston just completely sucked against the Islanders is because he had no defense. I mean, McAvoy's great. Yeah, sure. he, I mean, McAvoy should have been top three in the Norris, honestly. But besides that, I mean, who else did he really have? Grizzly like, is like, good, but... Grizzly like looked like he looked horrible. Like, right. Brendan, six. Yeah, and Brendan Carlo didn't play well. Like, I do think the loss... Like, I even Carlo said this in the offseason... I even said this 
Yeah, but I even said this in the offseason that the loss of – they have to replace the loss of Krug and Chara. Chara has played almost like, what, 1,600 games, probably even more than that if I'm being honest. He's been in the league since the late 90s. And Krug, who's your top power play option, your top pair defenseman, they didn't replace any of them. And, you know, hell, if they even got one top pair defenseman, I think that would have been, you know, better for Boston, but he didn't do anything in on the defensive end. So – you know, I think that's one target Boston needs to look at. They have a couple of trading options. I think if they trade a guy like Jake DeBrusk, you know, for a young defenseman, let's just say Caleb Jones, for example, I'm just throwing it out there, a guy like Travis Dermott, I think that would be beneficial to the Bruins. I think they're going to go for Eichel, in my opinion, uh, to stay competitive. Probably. I mean, it wouldn't hurt them. Uh, I don't think it would help them either, so. Uh, they might become like, because they've done it with Coyle. Because he's a Boston native, they might think, oh, Eichel's a Boston native. Let's get him to help. That would be an interesting uh, – I mean, Hall and Eichel, ooh. Wait, that, oh, no, that – wait, <laughs> oh, no, 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 never mind. No, no, never mind. That didn't work on a – Yeah, don't do that. I mean, that didn't work in Buffalo, but what does work in Buffalo? You know, that'd be kind of funny. That's true. You know, no, Hall and I could just you know, work out in Buffalo, then they go off in Boston. That'd be kind of funny. I won't lie. I feel like every Buffalo fan should just be like, if you if you pick on a if you pick on a Buffalo fan, you you. you are you are a bad person because they have to deal with enough shit. Like you want to pick on a Leafs fan, you want to pick on an Oilers fan, a Penguins fan, any other fan in the te- in the league. Fair enough, but to pick on a to pick on a Buffalo fan, that's just cold. Okay, maybe maybe uh, picking on Leafs fans are good, but besides that, uh, next next series because we're getting off topic. Yeah, uh, next series. Uh, let's go with who uh, New York will oh. be facing with the yep. Tampa Bay Hurricane series, and uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you. Read it all. <laughs> okay. um, you have a lot to say, I know. Well, first of all, uh. Remember what I said about being humble, because you haven't been like this in a while, Canes fans. This is what I meant. You got put back in your place. Um, your whole team showed its true colors. And uh, FYI, Nadalkovich finished worse than Saros did in the playoffs in terms of save percentage. Uh, all while facing less shots per game. And um, sorry to say this, but... Uh, yeah, it, it was definitely deserved with the way your whole organization was acting. Um, but yeah, it, basically, it 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 showed less of anything poor on the Kane side, and it showed more of just the superpower that Tampa is. I I I'm gonna say this: I still can't believe people thought like Carolina would be Tampa, even though they just like. Temp kind of barely got out of Nashville, even though they should have swept them. And right. the, and the undisciplined of like Carolina, especially during that game, I believe it was yeah game four when they were up four two, really showed. I also yeah. think it's just they had no playoff. I mean, they had they have playoff experience, but you know you gotta you know. A lot of those guys, you know, really haven't made it that far in the playoffs per se. I mean, in 2019, they did make it to the third round. They got swept. But, you know, you can't be taking penalties and you can't be collapsing at crucial parts of the game. That's where your poise comes in. And that's that's where I feel like you need it. That's where the veteran part of the playoffs come in. You, know, you need a steady veteran who, you know, can play a calm game in the playoffs because these young kids, you know, still kind of treat it like it's the regular season. Yeah. And, I yeah. mean... That, 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 was, that, that, that harmed them. That harmed the series for them. Yeah, and it was on full showcase in the series against us where we were where mainly Nick Cousins and Eric Howla were able, were able to get under Natchez's skin the whole series, and we kind of just took him out of the series. Yeah, that rem- exactly reminds me. Like, I mean, that's what ever, like every series that's going to happen to someone, I mean – that's what Montreal did to Matthews. That's what the Ducks did to McDavid back in 2017. You got to get under the young kid's skin, and it worked. It kind of worked out for the Preds, where they could have won. They won all four OT games. Guess what? They beat the they beat the Canes. 
Yeah. And Tampa, Tampa kind of did the same thing too. They got guys like Goudreau, Maru, and Coleman to get under the player's skin, and it actually worked out. Yeah, I mean, like it's very important to to not let anything get under your skin. And you know, I know some people in Tundra like to say that emotion is very good in the game, especially if you don't really you know know much and you know you like to bounce between teams. So you, um, but so you it's good to not have it's good to not have emotion in hockey. Especially since there's so many people who will try to get under your skin. I'll just say one thing. Carolina might be in a, like a like a, also a great position, but also a, also a position where they need to be careful, especially with Dougie Hamilton and he's a UFA. Like they need to make sure whether his prime will like start when exactly where his prime started to drop, so they. Don't end up in like a Louis Erickson situation, and then they need to figure out a way to get rid of Brad Brady's. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Skaja or something. Yeah, Brady Shea. Shea. Yeah, Brady Shea. Shea. Shea yeah. because that contract looks horrible. Yeah, get, I mean, get rid of Shea. Get rid of Shea. They, my question is, how did New York first of all convince them to trade them a first round pick for Shea? I don't know. Skaja. Skaja. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of Shay, and I buy Shay. I mean this Shay. So let me just. Excuse me. <laughs> wow, wait, I'm wait, the wait. backbone of this wow. podcast. I, uh, I, I'm the one that carries this. But uh, uh, Nashville, we did a little pranking back towards Carolina after the series, so we made them banners for them. Uh, won one game in the second round. That's one of their new banners. Played two different goalies and complained about refs in both rounds. So there's your new banners. Uh, Nashville officially makes banners for every team in the NHL. Um, so there you guys Vegas go. Too. Yeah, we made one for Vegas. Uh, we we also inspired uh, Edmonton to make a banner over an internet poll. So let's go. We're just we. Are you team? We should literally just. <laughs> we should we should be commissioned to make banners like a Nashville. We really I need agree. you to make, make a banner. For everybody. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like Buffalo gets a banner for being the shittiest team in the world. <laughs> okay. so. Oh no, not <laughs> Buffalo. I'm sorry, Chamber Shanty. I mean, actually. that should actually go to to the Leafs because the Leafs. <laughs> the Leafs. Uh-huh. Uh, you know what? Speaking about the Leafs, well, yeah, longest cup show in history. You can sign up one for that. That's speaking about the Leafs, awesome. speaking about the Leafs, Austin Matthews cares about the YouTubers versus TikToks fight more than NHL playoff hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Speaking about the Leafs, let's talk about the Canadians Jets series. And uh, do you want me to go off on this? I mean, you know, I'll go first. Let, me, it, let me say my thoughts first. I got. This. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you, before anyone says anything, if if you, Dank, if you complain about Ducharme once Ducharme, during this whole thing, yeah. oh, even though he led you, God. if you claim, if you complain about him once. After he led you to the semifinals, I will remove you from this call and you will not be no, allowed back in. No, oh nope. my god. Are you serious? Yup, I am serious. Alright, so go <laughs> ahead, Shay. Right. Oh, go ahead, god. Shay. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Alright? If Mark, here's my thing. If Mark Scheifele does not get to, if he doesn't make that hit, and Dylan DeMello is not injured, that series goes six games at least, in my opinion. Absolutely. Now, here's the key difference. When the Jets swept the Oilers, they are all close games. Three, I mean, they're I mean, they're all one goal games. If you check game one, it says four to one, but there are two empty netters. So it was actually, a, it was basically a one goal game the whole way through. The difference was Connor Hellebuck was Connor Hellebuck. This series, Con- Connor Hellebuck did not play well, which makes sense. He had what ten days off. You know, the Jets were rusty, and the the Habs were just coming off a magnificent series against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, I think. I do think that the Habs kind of got lucky in some sense. You know, I was cheering for them, but I think at some point there's like a yeah. couple week, like a couple penalties. I was like, okay, that should not have been called. There were a couple of goals. I was like, okay, maybe you know the defense could have played that better. Maybe Hellebuck could have been better. But still, uh, you know, it's great to see the Habs make this run when everybody expected the second round series to be the Oilers and at least it was the Jets and the Habs. And you know what? I do, I think the Habs can give Vegas a run, a uh, taste of their own medicine. I think, you know, once again, the Habs are the most, you know, skilled and high octane offensive. But, you know, they have they have 
you know, an Olympic gold medalist and a Hart Trophy winner in the, in the net. Yeah. And they have a lot of veterans, a playoff experience, and a lot of guys, you know, who, you know, can show up and be that guy, to, you know, that can lead the team. And with Vegas, you know, once again, they beat Colorado, which I expected it to happen. But, you know, I, I, I just I just think the Habs are, are really underrated against that team. And I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to seven games. I'm going to say one one thing about, like, Hullabuck. It wasn't – like, you said that, like, Hullabuck didn't play well exactly. But, like, his whole – specifically his defense and more specifically – like this coverage, like Morrissey's coverage to like cover like guys like Tempoli or guys like, I don't know, when they're going in on the rush, he just goes on his belly. Yeah. How can the goalie like, how can the goalie just like get supported when like the, like according to like a salary to like top D man, even though he's kind of like that contract will like just hit them in the back of the head later on. Like that con that like when the top defender basically is just not defending correctly like the whole right. team just gave up on him and and yes you were right about price like Montreal getting a bit lucky analytically yes they are lucky like, right yeah pdo is over apparently it's over 103 games against winnipeg yeah that's, that's high and they had and price wasn't challenged at all yeah, the Jets did not take, like, I think even in game, what, four, they just had, what, 15 shots? It wasn't a lot. And, and in game two, like, the low danger, like, shots were at 18 out yeah. of, like, I believe 30. Yeah, right. And but the only thing I can say that without say is, like, Suzuki came around to, like, bite Winnipeg in, in the behind because... He, he, Winnipeg traded that first round with <laughs> Vegas. To keep, uh, Thornton, uh, what was it? So they can keep, uh, Chris Thorburn and Marco Dano? Yeah. Um, give no, away sorry, Chris was, Thorburn. Yeah, Toby Enstrom. Toby Enstrom, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that trade, that, that's like the only good thing, positive, I can say going from Montreal before. And I don't want, before Rossi, like, Mews me into complaining, but like that's like my limit in saying Suzuki a bit Winnipeg in the butt. Yeah. And Shifley actually shouldn't have done that hit, even though he was frustrated that whole game won. And it was kind of leading to a bad thing. The thing that pisses me off is that Shifley still thinks he did nothing wrong. Yeah, for, yeah, me too. And I, I seen yeah, that. I was like, Come on, man, take some responsibility. Like, yeah, that, it was just that's, that's where just it lowered the sentence to like four games to like one or two. I mean, honestly, no, it should have been. It should have stayed where it was at because if Shifley plays another game in that series, it's not. Gonna He's be dead. Good. He gets to be ugly. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I. I don't think it'll be as bad as what we saw with Washington, New York, but it'll be bad. Here's the funny thing. He suspended one regular season game. Yep, because it carries <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's going to be suspended game one, and game one is going to be against Montreal. Actually, would it be one preseason game, or would it actually be one regular season? No, it's no regular it'd be regular season. season. Okay, yeah, okay. preseason doesn't count. Just, I mean, I guess just play him every preseason game so he actually, you know, has playing time going into the season or whatever. But, yeah, uh, Winnipeg gets swept. Uh, Jets fans molding because their defense is garbage. Yep. And let's go on to the next series, which was my favorite series so far in these playoffs. It, this this series was amazing. Colorado yeah, Vegas. Was unbelievable. Just two high octane, powerful teams. And my prediction was, but and I'm not kidding when I say this. My prediction was Vegas and six. And the reason I said this was because I I made comparisons between. Colorado and the old Washington Capitals where they can't get out of the second round. And so far, they look the exact same thing. Every time Washington but before 2018 had that series lead, they could never close it. And, I mean, to say that with Colorado here, they had a 2 nothing series lead. They almost won game three, but caught, what, Vegas got two goals in the final four minutes to win it. Uh, game four happens. I believe that was... What, game four was the... 
was the, uh, what happened in Game Four? Because Game Five was the OT win. Game Six was the series. What happened in Game Four? I'm trying to remember. Was the comeback game? I think was it in the comeback game was no, Game that Three. Was five one. Game Three. Yeah. Five so, one. Five one. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Five. That was a five one game. Then Colorado had a chance to take the three two series lead on home ice. They lose in Game Five. Mark Stone got it. Then Game Six. Once again, they had it and they blew it. And if I'm Joe Sackick, I don't know what you do because this is this was a deep, deep team. Their defense, they they had the best defense in the league. Yeah, sure. I thought them was them losing Graves. To be honest, I mean yes, but they still had Gerard. They still had Byram. They still had McCarr. They st- they refused to play Byram. Okay, yeah, but they still had Devon Taves. That defense is still very good without Ryan Graves. Here's the thing, that defense though. without Ryan Shay. Graves is still miles better than Vegas's. Shay, Shay. The, the difference between the Capitals and the Avalanche is that Avalanche got didn't get beat by the same team like Washington did. Colorado got beat by a better analytically team. That's true. And they got shut down, especially in the slot, because Vegas likes to block. Yeah, the Vegas' Vegas's entire defense is roped around just blocking shots. It's specifically Graves, like, was trying to get shots on net in, like, one game. I don't know what game, but I saw the stat. He got attempted seven shots, blocked six times. Well, here here's an interesting stat. If you look at the shots against per game category of stats, Vegas leads all of the playoffs right now with 25.9 shots against per game. Mm-hmm. The second right. closest team to them is the Maple Leafs, 28.3. And then you have the Avalanche with 30.2. And then the Hurricanes with 30.7. Right. You know, and here, here's my think. Um, if I can regain my thought, I just, yeah, I got it. You know, you, you're talking about the their defense, and I think that all goes with Peter DeBoer. I don't think we all, I don't think anyone realizes how good of a coach this guy is. I mean, the last five years, which is six seasons, uh, his teams have made it to the conference finals four times. In 2016 with the Sharks, they beat the Blues in six. In 2018 with the – no, sorry, in 2019 with the Sharks, they lost to the Blues in six. And now he's back with Vegas in back-to-back years. And, you know, he dealt it with New Jersey. In his first year of New Jersey, they went to the Stanley Cup finals. With uh, the Panthers, they went to the third round his first year. Mm. Um, he is a very good coach. I don't really, I, you know, he's a very good coach. And I guess the magic they, uh, that team had with Gallant, I mean, it was awesome to see what Gallant did with that squad, of course. But I think the board has, in my opinion, is a better coach than Gallant. And it's it's really showing right now. I think, you know, the, his teams are always good. You know, it's the right mixture of offense and defense. And... You know, they, they're going to be in contention for the next five years at least. And, you know, they're definitely going to win a cup at some point. I mean, hell, they could win two or three. It would not surprise me because they're that good. But, you know, we should give a lot more credit to Peter DeBoer. Uh, Shay? What's up? I think he said something like Peter DeBoer led the Florida Panthers to the third round. He didn't lead the Florida Panthers to anything. I'm pretty sure he did. There's a team. No. I, I, Oh, no, I think sure. like just the first round. I think that's it. I mean, I'm not sure that was a different coach. Oh, speaking of Peter DeBoer, it's his birthday today, so happy birthday. Speaking um, of happy birthday, Pete. Speaking of but, also, oh yeah, oh, no, you're right, Dick. My bad, my bad. I meant to say he led to the Sharks in his first year as the coach to the Cup Finals, like he did with New Jersey. That, that was my bad. So you are right. Yeah. But yeah, he did um, do well in his first year in Florida. He got 93 points. They end up missing, but my point yeah. is, he's a very good coach. I got a quick question. If Nazem Kadri plays this series, do you think that has a different outcome for the Avalanche? Yes. I think it I think it pushes to seven games. I don't know if they win I don't know if they win it though. I think it pushes mm-hmm. it to seven games and they win it, in my opinion. Because uh, Nazem no, Kadri you know, is that good. I think it depends on like how the like even with Kadri and it depends on the effort of Grubauer because even later on in the series that guy seemed dead tired. Right. Because they played him a lot during the season. Losing Francois was so harmful for the Avs. If Francois played half the game, so you split it, and Grubauer's your story going in, the Avs probably win the series because Grubauer that, isn't fatigued. That was a factor of the series. It was Grubauer. Yep. 
And it's not that like Blue Barrett played horribly. His defense did kind of like make some costly turnovers. I mean, yeah, Sharar was terrible. But, series. Com- but coming up as a, as a UFA this season, you need to like learn from like the likes of like Carrie Price or Mark Andre Fleury, his recent opponent this series, is to learn how to bail out your team in mess- when they make the wrong mistakes. And yeah. he he did not do that. And that's what that's what the elite always like know how to do is they bail out the team when they play horribly, like Montreal with Toronto. Flurry did a couple of times against Minnesota. It's it's that style of play that like like Blue Baron used to learn. And he'll get there at some point. I mean he what, he's twenty I think he's twenty nine or thirty, but you yeah. know, he he has to learn to, you know, clutch up in the big games. And, you know, I you know, people are gonna keep saying it's a learning experience for Yaz, but it, it really isn't. I mean, these guys are getting older. I mean, Nathan Kins twenty six in September and he still hasn't made it out of the second round. So, you know, at some point they're gonna have to get this they have to get this together because I mean this is this is the best team they're they can kind of constru- construct because they have the cap is staying flat they have a lot of UFAs most of them are probably leaving I mean the lone one staff for sure staying is probably Gabe Landeskog and Grubauer but besides that guys like Sod are going to be gone and you Sod know just... back to Chicago baby Cam yeah. McCarthy's are RFA too yeah he's going to get like yeah. what 8 mils 9 mil he's going to get a lot so this was their best year this was I mean just like Toronto I mean th- those these two teams, those were their best years to win the cup, and they failed. And I mean, with I don't think there's, I mean, with Toronto, there's more pressure in my opinion than Colorado. I think Colorado still, you know, you know, still doesn't deserve, you know, the fire yet. But I mean, it's it's getting up there. It's getting close to where okay, we need to make a huge trade of this team. I think Colorado just like played besides maybe San Jose, or like either they were injured or they just played against a better team and they're just especially in the like a stat west division with vegas and vegas and the likes of minnesota coming out they just played against a stacked defense team that yep. a stacked team in the west yep and i mean if they were in the central i mean I mean, they probably make it to the third round. Let's be honest, because I mean, they're better than every central team in there. Um, but you're right; they just faced a damn good hockey team. And I, you know, if I'm an ass fan, I wouldn't be upset. I think, I just think Vegas is really good. But I think next year for sure, you have to make it to the third round because if you lose in the second round again, you know, there's there's a bit there's there's issues there. Yeah, they yeah, absolutely back. Yeah, yeah absolutely back. Absolutely back as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, that does it for the round two recap. Let's get into uh, Columbus hiring their new coach, and Jackets fans aren't happy about this. They have uh, hired Brad Larson as their new head coach. I believe he was the power play coach there. Um, I think he was their AHL coach beforehand. I'm not too certain on that, but... I mean, I don't know a lot about him. If you guys know stuff about him, uh, fill me in, maybe. I don't really know anything uh, about him. No, I don't he, know too much. He was an assistant for some years, and he played in the AHL with Nathan Kirby. That, that's all I caught that's all you got. Um, Here's a bit of an update. The Islanders ahead one nothing on the Lightning. Yeah, Ooh. Matthew Barzell. Matthew Barzell gives them the go-ahead goal. Uh, uh, yeah, it's for Jackets fans. Our team is just irrelevant, so we can't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there is something we can talk about, though. The NHL Awards. Um, uh, they sh- yeah. The award this. winners are actually going to be starting to be announced tomorrow, so this is actually a perfect time to make our predictions. The predictions about who we want to win, but the predictions about the league, who who they're probably going to pick. Uh, running so for King Let's start off with the Norris. Uh, 
Uh, so if I can, let me try to actually pull this up because I want to, uh, I want to make sure I have everything on my screen here. But the first the Norris, three candidates. Actually, no. Start off with the Vesna. Sorry, yeah. Let's start off with the Vesna. So the three candidates for the Vesna are Mark Andre Fleury, Philip Grubauer, and Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, for me, without a doubt, a no-brainer for my choice is Mark Andre Fleury. Yeah. Same here. I. I just think he was inc- – I mean, even after the all season where there's so many trade rumors that he was he's going to be traded, you know, Leonard got injured for, like, the first three months, and Fleury just took off. He carried that squad, and he's carrying them right now in the playoffs. And, you know, he's only – he's 36, but he is still such a damn good goalie. And that's no disrespect to Phil Grubauer or Vasilevsky, who also had a very good season. But, man, Fleury just here is just on another level – um, and you know, at his age, he deserves another cup. I want to see him another cup. He's a, he's a great guy. He's a class that guy. And you know, they're probably going to expose him to Seattle. So, no. And his last year in no, Vegas, they're not. probably they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. Wow. No, Vegas is exempt. Vegas is exempt. Oh yeah, I'm so stupid. Never mind. Yeah, ve- <laughs> Vegas I, is oh, exempt. I, I mean, I either I, yeah, I mean, no, that was a brain fart by me. But either way, this is his probably last season in Vegas. It probably is with a flat cap, and I mean they already made what a long term commitment to uh, they made a long term t- commitment to Leonard, so they they kind of have to trade Flurry to clear up some cap space. But you know, I, I just hope to see him win it. Just as much as I love like Mark Andre Fleury, I think the NHL is just going to get on the Vassy I train. Yeah, I agree. And in my opinion, just, they just they just see this guy as some probably is one of the best goaltenders in the league, like at this very moment. And he's he's probably the only like this is like the, probably the fair, the most fair like Tampa Bay selection I've seen. Like Vasilevsky in the Vincent Trophy. It's I think NHL is going to pick Vasilevsky. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Yep. Uh, next, we got the Ted Lindsay MVP photo on by the players. The cans are City Crosby, Matthews, McDavid. I think this one's pretty obvious. McDavid, Crosby. obviously. Crosby. Oh, I was gonna say Tom Wilson. Oh, uh, so oh. Sean Avery. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, no, no, no. I know who. I know who it's gonna be. Oh, mm. who? You're all wrong. Ready? Let's go. Let's see your Eric. Good Branson. Let's go! Oh. Let's go! No, Let's no, he's go. gonna win the Norris. What the? What? He's gonna win every the... single award this he's year, and next every year, and the year after. He's good Bran- gonna win the Norris. Good Branson for Norris, Vesna. Yeah. Good Branson for Vesna. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna win the best. <laughs> 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 good Branson's right. gonna storm into the building and like hold the cup first. Let's go! I think, I think my my prediction for um Ted Lindsay is George Paros. Great. Oh, yeah. He's a great job. He's, he's a great job, like spending and finding these kids, these young <laughs> men, for absolutely nothing. Wait, 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 wait! Ted Lindsay Award. Ryan Reeves. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, let's go. It's pretty valuable. All right, next we got the Calder, Kaprizov, <laughs> Nedeljkovic, who, in my opinion, shouldn't be there, but okay. And Jason Robertson. Oh. I'm gonna say. I think the league picks Kaprizov, but in my opinion, it's Jason Robertson. Guys, no, you, you're not understanding. It it's going to go to Kaprizov because you know, but it should yeah. go to Robertson. But it should. yeah, it should. Yeah. yeah. Didn't Robertson have a better points per game too? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It, it should go to Robertson. Robertson so also right. carried the Stars to a lot better than what they should have been. You know, here here's the thing. If Kaprizov wins, that just goes to the fact matter that they don't care about points per game. Because here's the story. In 2011, yeah, I think it was Gabe Landeskog who won the Calder. He had 52 games. No, sorry, no, he had 52 points in 82 games. Nuge had 52 and 62, and I'm still mauling over that. Guy got snubbed. Played 20 no. less games. It had the same amount of points. That's yeah, because just... because they've they've basically admitted it's not about point per game or anything. Because it should be. No, because no, to them, it's your then. To them, it's about games played. Okay, so fifty. So you're saying a guy who played fifty, sixty-two games had the same amount of points as someone who's played eighty-two games. 
Yes. They so you're gonna... saying if you tried 53, he would have won it. No, no, they would have. They it would have gone to Landis Scott no matter what because he sense. played more games. I guess so. If if like the like the call that goes to like the most points, it just it would just turn into like a Norris Trophy. Exactly. Head trophy. That that no. Because that, no, is, that's what the Calder should be. Because the Norris Trophy no, the isn't about who should be like who's the best all our rookie, like I agree. offensively and defensively. Combined. I agree. And uh, not just points. Okay, but it shouldn't just be determined on who plays the most games, because that's just terrible. So you're saying that there's one year where there's like 20 rookies and eight of them played 50 games and got and got like. 50 points, but one rookie played 82 games and got, like, two points. He wins the Calder. Basically, that's what's happened before. Well, not that exact Jackman thing. Won but... it one year, so. Yeah. League is rigged. We all know this. League is rigged. Headman's gonna win the Norris because he sucks. Oh, we'll get to the Norris. We're gonna get to the Norris. Don't worry. That better be next because I want to talk it's about not, it. Because... Almost... <laughs> no! The next... the next... Hey, shut up! The next, the next uh, award is the best award of all time, the King Clancy Award. Rene, Rene, Rene. The, the finals are Gabriel, Rene, Rene. Subban. I Rene. think Subban. Rene, Rene, Subban. Rene, Rene. Rene. Yeah. I'm I mean, I, I mean, it should be Subban. I mean, I know six. I mean, hell, he should win it every year. He donated ten million dollars to a children's hospital. PK, I'm. I'm surely like shocked to see, like not shocked. I didn't know at first, like Curtis Gabriel, like they work on the LGBT team because all I saw was, like on the ice at stuff like him, being a like a <laughs> yeah. on the ice. Like, the what they do? Like, I was like, okay, we get it, Rossi. And all I saw was is, is like him fighting. I was like, oh wow, this guy does good on the LGBT. I think, I think NHL. Would bank on that and say, I'm saying, Gabriel. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, the whole promotion too. Hockey's for everyone, so yeah. I, but I just personally believe, like, you guys could say that I'm being a homer, which I probably am when it comes to this. Renee's getting it like third, yeah. I know because it's Rene and you know, but everything. But I think maybe the league takes a look at it and it's like, ever since he's been in Nashville his whole career. He's been nominated for the King Clancy every single year. So, you know, maybe that there's a reason or something, but, you know. Doubt it. Yeah. I, it's pretty an open and shut case. It's going to go to Sube and Gabriel. The next award is the most useless award, the Lady Bank. I love D'Angelo. 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 Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I, laugh, I laugh at this trophy every time. Because I see Matthews, and I know his off-ice incident with the police officer, yeah. and I go, <laughs> oh, no. What, like, the Lady Vegas is supposed to be for who best represents the game, right? No, it's the most gentlemanly player, so if you say your story. <laughs> on the ice, on the ice. On yeah, the on the ice, ice. though. On oh, the ice. on the ice. On the ice. So what you do off the ice doesn't matter. So you tell me right now, like, someone like Patrick Kane could win it. I mean, he actually was nominated one year. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is absurd. Final start, Austin Matthews, Jared Spurgeon, Jacob Slavin. Who, who knows? Fuck this award. Next one. Hey. Frenchie <laughs> Selkie, best offensive forward. Barkov, Bergeron, Stone. This year, Barkov. I'm going to lose Barkov. Yeah. Barkov, Barkov, yeah, Barkov. Yeah, he was unbelievable I'm, this year. The I'm, Russian, no. No, I'm just shocked that, like, Erickson Eck. I'm, I'm, I'll be shocked if Erickson Eck or... Isn't like, yeah, top five. It's, yeah, top five or top ten. Okay, that guy has please, okay. please take the mic out of your throat. Please. <laughs> this is the only way, like, I can, like, actually, like... Please, I beg you. I, I already have to deal Ryan. enough of it with Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, you know, Ryan always smashes on his keyboard, like... Yeah. yeah, and he's always like this. He's always like... So do you... <laughs> You know we're like still this. recording, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but yeah, it should be Barkov. Barkov, and then the the most uh, uh, no, the last one, which isn't gonna have a deserving winner like it did last we're year. We're not done yet. No, what what else no. is there? 
Joe Masterson, the dedication of hockey. Uh. Limblom, Marlo, Limblom. No, Dumb, yeah, Dumbo. No, no, not Dumbo. <laughs> 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 Dumbo, Marlo, <laughs> Dumbo. <laughs> we'll call you on that from now on. That's his nickname. Now. <laughs> the elephant's gonna win it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Matt Dumbo, Patrick Marlo. That's what their. That's what the Wad logo actually is. It's not a bear. It's an elephant. <laughs> it's like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. Marlo, Dumba, and Oscar Lindblom, and it should be Oscar Lindblom. It should be Lindblom. It should be. It should be. It should be a hundred percent. You know, it's a good. It's a great story that he beat cancer. You know, he came back during the playoffs. He was great this season. He was good. Um, he was nominated for the last year. I think Bobby Ryan uh, got it. But no, this he wasn't year, nominated it, at all. Yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't nominated at all last he was, year. It was, he was, it was Stephen Johns, Bobby Ryan, and who else? Um, There's someone else, right? This is usually three. Oh man, I don't remember. I don't remember either. Who cool. actually? And I, I can just search it up right now. Am, was uh, it was it Leonard again? Last it year? was. I think it was him the year before. It was. No, he actually was nominated. Yeah, it was Blum I told you. Oh. That's how he won. Oh, it was. Yeah, Dank, it was. Dank, you were wrong again, and for that you must be sacrificed. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 Rossi's favorite award. It was my favorite award. Now it's going to go to someone who doesn't deserve it. It'd be like John Carlson getting it last year. All right. It's the Norris. Fox. McCarr. It has to be Fox. In my opinion. It should be Fox. It should be Fox. It's going to go to Hedman. Hedman. It's It's going to go to Hedman. It's going to go to Hedman. Hedman. It's going to go to Hedman even though he can't play defense and blah, 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 blah. And he's going to win and every Tampa Bay fans going to be like, oh, uh," no. I stick by my... Right, my top three, sorry, my top three was Fox, McCarr, McAvoy. My oh, top, three top three was yeah. said, my top three was Yossi, Yossi, and Yossi. Yeah, okay. my, my like top were like McCaffrey, Team, Dem and Team. Oh yeah, uh, that is. And specifically, I think McCarr deserved to at least mention in it. You know what? But, good, good Branson is more deserving than than Hedman because at least Good Branson think, can play defense. At least. I don't know. <laughs> you know, you know what? This is why we need two awards. Make James Norris the best offense defenseman, and make fucking like a you know, Larry. That, that, that's the one thing EA NHL has done right. That the Bill Masterson goes to the best defensive defenseman in the league. That's the one thing they've done. Right. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? Just make a new, just make a new award called the Larry Robertson Award, and make that or, best defenseman. Or actually, just give the Norris to the best defenseman. Just do that. Overall defenseman, yes. Yes, just do that. Like they did last year with Yossi. Okay, so best overall defenseman still Adam Fox. Yes, just just do that. Just just do that. Just do what you did last year. Just give it to who deserves it. All right, next. No. We got the Jack Adams. We got Rod Brindamore, Dean Evison, and Joel Quinville. And I'm, honestly, I say it should go to Evison. It's. I think so too. Uh. I don't know. I'm gonna give it to Joey Q, bro. I don't think mm. so, man. I don't know. He he did things with that with that team that no one thought he would. You know, uh, uh, so did Everson. This has been like the most like this award has been like the most fair like amount of Canada. That and yeah. maybe like the Selkie. Those two have been like the like the fairest like pick of Canada. The fairest right. not three. And I say it's I'm gonna throw it on a limb here. I'm gonna say Brenda Moore. Wow. Boo. Hmm. All, he no. did, all he did was whine during the series against us. <laughs> He's passionate against the passionate for the players. I I, don't know. I the ref don't call <laughs> literally Heinz pulled out a receipt of every single penalty called and literally was just cr- was shit talking Brenda Moore the entire interview. <laughs> that was <laughs> great A trolling. How many times are we cursed in this episode? Yes. A lot. That many. I mean, to oh, be wow. fair, it's it it did get to a point where it was just going with the flow and it was good. But um, um <laughs> you know what? The, the, the this next award I'm gonna say has doesn't have any um finalists yet. But you know, let's make our own. Let's make our predictions. The Jim Gregory Jam of the Year. Bill Zito. Bill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill Zito should yeah. win it. Yeah. In my opinion, he should easily be a top three candidate. Mm-hmm. I think the other two probably goes to Don Waddell, considering that the Hurricanes 
you know, you know what? The, the, you know, the GM of the year just might be the, the three same guys who got the coach of the year, just three same teams. Bill Joking. Zito, Bill Garrett, former Penguins with assistant, by the way, yep. and and Oilers legend, and uh, Don Waddell. Yeah, I mean, it should go to Bill Zito. That's it. Like, case closed. Yeah. yeah. All yep. right, in the final award, we're going to go over. It's the Hart Memorial. And we got the, we got the 3M players. We got Nathan McKinnon. Austin Matthews, and Milan Lucic. Liam Foody wins. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, my pal gonna... Lucic wins the... No, I'm kidding. It's McDavid, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go out... No, no, no. I'm going to go out on a limb. Eric Goodbranson, baby! Oh <laughs> yeah. No, he is mine. Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki. We're not training this man. We're not training this man. If Bergeron lays his fingers on Suzuki, wait, I don't know what no, no, to no, do. Wait. Here's here's the real one. Jordan Stahl. Eric Stahl. Mark Stahl. Mark. You forgot about, you forgot wait, about Jared no. Stahl. No, no, no. Yeah, it, it's not Jared Stahl, the forgotten no, brother. It's yeah. not. It's not Mark Stahl, the third one. It's Malcolm Subban. You know, like, you, know what's funny? you know what's funny? Um, did you guys know in the 2019 2020 season, after you know, like the, during the bubble stuff, when the um, <laughs> here's the funny, when the awards came out, you know who got a heart vote? Nick Cousins. Let's go. Interesting. He got, he, he got two second place votes. Really? <laughs> he got two wow. second place votes. Who the what? The running votes. I mean. Those two same people also voted Leon Dreisel for the Selkie, so uh, hey, their who, opinions do not matter. Eh. Who? When was this, though? This is, uh, like, during the bubble, like, during the 2020 awards. So when he was with Vegas. Yes. Those and he was with Montreal. Really okay. No. Probably some Montreal guys. Those okay, are definitely people, wait, like, wait, as wait, a joke, wait. being like, yeah, I'm going to be uh, on the NHL <laughs> voting committee and then guys, just do news. that, like, big actually news. make it. Big news. I don't hmm. know if this news is as big as the Oreo McFlurry. Oh God! But huge news. Philip Forsberg is now engaged. Let's go, big let's go. Still. Let's go. Get that bag. Yeah, let's go. So uh, congratulations on your engagement, Philip Forsberg. Oh wow! And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it to talk about. That's... I mean, what else? I mean, expansion yeah. draft is in a month or so. The draft is in a month or so. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of content this off season. We can't, I can't wait. Hey, sure. Curry got drafted. First female in the OHL to get drafted. Oh yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. That's yeah. Great. Get, get, uh, congrats to Hey Curry. Yeah. Just, while uh... Ross, you're not, you're, while Ross, you're not enthusiastic about that. <laughs> okay, let's just <laughs> let's just wrap this up. Let's let's wrap it up. Okay, you wrap it out. All right, that'll do it for episode thirty-one <laughs> of the Tundra Cast. <laughs> uh, we hope to see you guys next time, and goodbye. Thank you.